am joined live in the studio by the Prime Minister, Theresa May. Good morning, Prime Minister. Morning, Andrew. Um, can we agree to start with that the one thing that voters deserve in what you yourself have said is going to be a very, very important election is no sound bites? Well, it is absolutely crucial because this is, uh, I think, the most important election that mm. this country has faced in my lifetime. That when people look at this election and when they hear what the politicians are saying, they think about the national interest. That should be what drives people when they go to vote. But no slogans. We can, we can agree, we can agree <laughs> now, for the next couple of minutes. Come on, Andrew. You're, 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 you know that we will all be talking as we go through this election. Every party will be talking about what they think is important. I'll be talking about... Strong the, and stable leadership. Well, I'll, I'll be talking... And there's a reason for talking about yeah. strong and stable leadership and having a strong and stable government. It's precisely because this is the most important right. election the country's faced in my lifetime. It's about the future of the country. It's about the national interest. It's just that people can listen to that kind of thing and think it's a bit robotic. No, it's... it's th when I talk about leadership, when I talk about the strength mm. of the government for the future. I do it for a reason, and the reason is this. We are facing a moment of change in this country. We're facing a moment when we have the opportunity to take this country forward, to make it an even better place to live for people, th for their futures, a more secure future for people. But part of that, part of doing that, is about getting the Brexit negotiations right. And it's important when we go into those negotiations, and we've already seen some of the comments that have been coming out of Brussels, which show that at times these negotiations are going to be tough. So in order to make sure that we get the right result, the best deal for this country, the deal that's going to work for people across the whole of this country, we need to ensure that we've got a strong hand in that negotiation. And that's what I'm talking about when I say to people, um, I want people to go out and vote. I want everybody to go out and vote on June the 8th because this is such an important election. Of course, I ask them to vote right. for me, but I want to make sure everybody goes and casts their vote. I'm going to come on to the, the, the Brexit issue uh, in a moment, but the other big thing about this election is that you are standing for the first time asking for your own mandate and your own name. And one of the questions people are asking, is this going to be, as it were, continuity David Cameron and George Osborne, or is the government, is the Conservative Party, taking a subtly different direction under Theresa May? Look, I served uh, in David Cameron's cabinet. I served as Home Secretary for six years, and I was very proud to serve with David. And if you look at what he did in government, he took a country from the brink of bankruptcy to a point where we had growth uh, and uh, where we see the deficit coming down by two-thirds. And it's because of the decisions that government took that we now see, for example, 1.8 million more children in good or outstanding schools. But, of course, on my own person, uh, there are issues that so I think we need to... So what is the different direction that we should be looking for? issues that I think we need to, to uh, uh, address in this country. First of all, of course, the circumstances have changed, so we do need to deliver on Brexit. That's what people have asked mm. us to do, and that's what I'm determined to do and get the best deal for this country. Mm. Um, but also, I think that there are issue, long-term issues that we need to address, long-term issues about the impact of the ageing population, for example, long-term issues about what sort of economy we want well, to be exactly, in the future. Be because meanwhile, we have in this country a huge number of working people, particularly public sector workers, who have now had seven years of below inflation pay increases, a, a really tough freeze on their pay. That can't go on, can it, in the next few years? Or, or is it vote, vote Tory and get more public sector pay freezes? No, we've had to take some tough decisions about the public sector, about public spending. We did that because of the state of the economy that we were left w mm. by the Labour Party when we came in in 2010. Now we need to look to the future and we need to address the longer term issues that the country, the longer term challenges the country are facing. We need to ensure that we are uh, getting decisions in the public sector right, but also that we have well, the strong economy. Because you're talking about pay in the public sector. Uh, and you can only ensure that we're putting the money that we need into the public sector if you've got a strong economy to pay for it. What? Now, you will only get that with strong government. You will only get that with a government that understands the importance of growth in the economy uh, and ensuring that government okay, is well doing what it needs to encourage that growth. Let's pluck out a specific example. Lots and lots of young people do a job that I wouldn't do and perhaps you wouldn't do. They decide to become nurses and give something back. Now, according to the Royal College of Nursing, they have had a 14% pay cuts since 2010 and we now get stories again from the RCN of lots of ordinary nurses by the end of the week having to use food banks because they can't afford to pay for food that is not the kind of country that you want to run is it 
I want a, a country that works for everyone, not just the privileged few. If we look well, at what happens, well, if, we, if we look at what, uh, at, uh, what is happening mm. in relation to pay within the National Health Service, in fact, when you look at basic pay together with progression pay, actually for around half of NHS staff, they have uh, annual increase of around, uh, on average, 3% three, 3 rather than the, the, uh, just the 1% basic pay. But I come back to the, the, the key question, which is, we have, and if you look at the National Health Service and funding in the National Health Service, we're putting £10 billion extra have, into I'm it. I'm sorry, Prime Minister, but, but we have nurses going to food banks at the moment. That must be wrong. We have, and there are many complex reasons why people go to, go to food banks. And I want to develop mm. an economy where, yes, we have a strong economy so that we can pay for the public services that people need, but also we have an economy where we're creating secure jobs and well-paid jobs mm. and higher-paid jobs for people. Well, but you're only going to do that if you've got... they haven't got enough money to but, eat at the moment. But if you're only going to be able to do this if you have a government that understands the importance of that strength in the economy. If you look at the proposals that the Labour Party are coming forward with, mm. they're nonsensical proposals mm. which simply don't okay, add well, up and would actually lead, the, actually lead to less money being available for the National mm. Health Service, less money being available for public sector pay and higher taxes on people. Under the Conservatives, under your government, the record number of food parcels last year has been handed out, according to the Dressel Trust, 1.2 million food parcels in this country. You said that on, on, on number 10 doorstep that you were going to be out there for the, for the ordinary working people. Those are people yes. who are really, really suffering. And I've asked you, under your government, if people vote Conservative again, is that going to carry on? And the answer seems to be yes. I, know, I haven't said that, Andrew. What I have said is that what I, if I'm elected as Prime Minister, if a Conservative government is elected, what we will be doing is working to create a strong economy in this, in this country, an economy which ensures that we're creating secure and higher paid jobs for people. I want people to have security for their future. Mm -hmm. But to do that, we need to get the Brexit negotiations right. To do that, we need to ensure we're developing our economy. That's why I've introduced a modern industrial well, strategy. Well, let's carry it's on about talking. firms growing and prospering. But it's also about making sure that prosperity and growth is around the whole of the country let's, and not well, just let's talk about confined to the, certain parts of the country. Let's talk about the whole of the country and again about working families. There are lots of benefit cuts in the pipeline. If they were introduced now, then three million, family, three million households in this country would be on average £2,500 worse off. Again, if they vote Conservative, that is what is going to happen. We have made changes to welfare as a Conservative government. And there's a reason for doing that, which is we want to ensure that, of course, there is a welfare system that gives people support when they need that support. Mm. But I also want to see a welfare system that is helping to encourage and see people getting into the workplace. I think work is the best route out of poverty. And as we look These at how we do that, families I'm as, discussing. As, well, as we do that, we need to ensure also that we are being fair to working families, to the taxpayers who are actually paying mm. for those benefits. That's why we've made, we have made a number of changes to the benefit system this to seems... ensure that there are more incentives in the benefit system for people to get into work. But yes, if we're talking about working families, what is important is ensuring that we have the economy that is developing those uh, higher paid jobs and also that we provide people with the skills to take those jobs. And that's at, where what we're doing, for example, for young people on technical sure. skills is but so important. Looking at what's happening in the real economy, this sounds very much like continuity austerity is Theresa May's message. Do you ever pause and wonder whether you've got it wrong? Yeah. What I want to do is to ensure that as we take look at the circumstances we're in at the moment, because things have changed and life will be different mm. in the future, we won't be in the European Union any longer. We need to get those Brexit negotiations right. I want a strong hand in those negotiations well, if I'm Prime Minister. Let me give you another that means, example then. Well, if can, I I just finish, can I just finish this, this uh, point? It's about those Brexit negotiations, but it's also about enthusiastically embracing the opportunities that Brexit will give us as a country. That's an opportunity to develop our economy, to develop those high pay, higher paid jobs, and to develop the skills that people need to take those jobs. Would that include an opportunity to properly fund schools? Because in England, primary schools are facing a £3 billion cut by 2020. And lots of parents watching this programme are well aware that parents are having to come in and fill in for... Uh, classes where there aren't enough teachers to be to be provided for. Um, there are raffle sales for books. 
education in England in particular is badly underfunded. And I ask you again, is there any prospect of change if people vote for Theresa May as oh, Prime Minister? Let's look at actually what is happening in education. We said that we will protect the core school's budget and we have done that. In well, fact, the level of funding, funding is falling. In fact, the level of funding going into schools is at record levels, it's something like forty one billion pounds this but a lot year. More pupils what as we're well. also what we're also looking at, yes, and as the number of pupils increases, the number of the money going into schools increases. But, but per what we're pupil also funding is falling. And it's going to carry no, on falling until twenty twenty. We have protected that core schools budget. But what we are also looking at is introducing a greater degree of fairness in the way in which schools are funded. Um, everybody okay, well, across the political spectrum has accepted that the current way that we allocate funding to schools is unfair. We want to bring in a much uh, fairer system of funding for schools. We've uh, made some proposals, we've consulted on them, and obviously we'll be responding you, you, with our final proposals in due course. You don't accept my figures, Prime Minister. Here's the National Audit Office. Mainstream schools have to make £3 billion in efficiency savings, that's cuts, by 2019-20 against a background of growing pupil numbers and a real-term reduction in funding per pupil. And I say to you again, surely you have to rethink what's going on in schools. We have... What we need to look at in schools is to make sure that we have a fair funding system mm. that is, is ensuring that the way that money okay. is allocated to schools is fair and is fair across the country. One of the reasons that the Conservatives have had to oversee so many cuts in so many areas is that under the last government you made an absolutely clear and to many people ridiculous promise to never raise income tax, VAT or national insurance, the so-called triple tax lock. Are you going to repeat that? We have absolutely no plans to increase the level of tax um, but I'm also very clear that I don't want to make specific proposals on on taxes unless I'm absolutely sure that I can deliver on those but it is would be my intention as a Conservative government and as a Conservative Prime Minister to reduce the uh, taxes on working families and if you've got but, strong but and stable would, so leadership accept, that's absolutely what you can do. You would accept that that tax lot was going too far. Your Chancellor thinks it tied his hands a little bit too tightly. Look, well, when people come to look at this uh, decision at the next election on June the 8th, they will have a choice between a Conservative Party that has always been a low tax party, that actually over the last few years has taken four million people out of paying income tax altogether, and a yes, Labour right. Party that is about raising taxes, that is about higher taxes for the future. So a Conservative Party that believes in lower taxes and whose intention is to reduce the taxes on working families or a Labour Party that wants to increase tax. You mentioned social care a moment ago and you have said that this is a huge issue for the country. It can't carry on ducking. It's big, big news for the NHS. Have you come to proposals to help us on social care? Well, I've, as I've said before, I think if we look at this issue on social care, we need to think of it as a, there are short-term measures to take and we've taken that. We've, in the budget, we put £2 billion mm -hmm. extra into social care. In the medium term, we need to make sure that good practice is spread across the whole of the country. If you look at things like delayed discharges from hospital, which is yes. where hospitals interact with local authorities on social care. Are we going to see a step care, change this? There are three I said there are three stages mm -hmm. to this. There's the short term, two billion pounds extra going in. There's the medium term, which is about spreading best practice around the country. Mm -hmm. And longer term, we need to uh, have a sustainable solution for social care. And yes, we have been working on that sustainable solution. And these issues, an issue like this about the impact of our ageing population, is exactly the just sort of long term... Just tell us a little bit more about the sustainable solution there. It, well, it will just, uh, is exactly the long sort of long term issue that I want to address for the future. And uh, if you want to know what's in our manifesto, Andrew, you'll have to wait until the manifesto is published. All right. Is the triple lock on pensions still safe? Under a Conservative government, the state pension will still go up every year uh, um, of the next parliament. Exactly how we calculate that mm -hmm. increase um, will be for the manifesto. And you'll, as I've just mm -hmm. said, you'll have to wait for the right. uh, manifesto to see what's in it. But uh, what we see already is that under, because of the actions taken under Conservatives in government uh, on the basic state pension, pensioners are £1,250 a year better off. And under a Conservative government, the state pension will continue to rise each what year. What about pensioners whose pension funds collapse at the same time as their bosses are heading off the Mediterranean into yachts with vast amounts of money in their back pockets. That is going to change, is it? Yes, it is, because I think this is one of the injustices. I think we have seen examples, uh, a limited number, we have seen examples where workers have been really worried about the future mm. of their pensions because of the actions that's been taken. 
So what we would do is we would bring in new rules and new powers for the pensions regulator so that if in certain circumstances where companies were being taken over, uh, there would be new powers for the regulator to make sure that the issue okay. around people's future pensions was being addressed so they had reassurance of the future of and their pensions. if this was in practice in the future, would a future Sir Philip Green be prosecuted and possibly jailed for what he did? Well, we would also be introducing greater powers to take action against individuals if what they were doing was right. about trying to, effectively trying to destroy people's pensions for the future. Let's turn to l'éléphant dans la chambre, Brexit. Um, you said in your Lancaster House speech that no deal was better than a bad deal. Do you stand by that? Yes, I do. Uh, I think it's important, but I also think it's important that we go in there with the strength of hand in negotiations to get the good deal for the, uh, for the British people. That's what I want to do. And that's why I say that every vote for me and my team on June the 8th will strengthen my hand in those negotiations. Because you've now had a private conversation with Mr Juncker and um, the rest of the team and it doesn't seem to have gone terribly well because Jean-Claude Juncker said apparently to Angela Merkel after meeting you it went very badly she is in a different galaxy based on that meeting no deal is much more likely than finding agreement was it that was it that bad a meeting <laughs> no look I'm I'm not in a different galaxy but I think what this shows and what some of the other comments we've seen coming from European leaders uh, shows is that there are going to be times when these negotiations are going to be tough and that's why you need strong and stable leadership in order to conduct those negotiations and get the best deal for Britain. I'm confident we can get a deal. You see the Trade Commissioner, Cecilia Malmström, has been very clear that mm. she thinks we will get a trade deal. But we've also seen the 27 standing absolutely shoulder to shoulder on the question of wanting a deal on money before they will even talk to us about trade and other issues. And they made that very, very clear this weekend. And then uh, the Luxembourg Prime Minister is talking about between 40 and 60 billion pounds worth of deal to be sorted out. Can I put it to you that if you win this election, if you get a big majority, the first thing that you will do is go over there and sign the cheque. No, they're, what they're very clear about is, yes, they do want to start some discussions about, uh, about money. Um, I'm very clear that at the end of the negotiations, we need to be clear not just about the Brexit arrangement, the exit, how we withdraw, but also what our future relationship is going to be. These negotiations are going to be tough. There are you, aren't, are it you isn't, prepared to agree on the money before you agree on everything else? I want to ensure that we agree on a trade deal and our withdrawal arrangements so that we know what both of those are when we leave the European but Union. But they are but saying you, you at, must agree the money no, first. No, they, they have, uh, if you look at what is being said in the guidelines, they say that they want to start the discussions on a number of issues. There are things that we absolutely agree on should be early in those discussions. The position of EU citizens living here in the UK and the position of UK citizens living in those 27 European countries. Absolutely, we agree, should be early so in the discussions. They also agree, if you look at the guidelines, mm. that we should be discussing the development of a special partnership for the future. Sure. So there I is much on which that, we agree but, on. But it is absolutely critical to this issue and to the election campaign. You are saying that you will not agree to pay a large bill to the EU until the entire negotiations are finished, yes and or no? The, and the EU itself has also said uh, that nothing is agreed until everything is agreed. All right, well, let's move on to some of the other issues. You mentioned EU citizens. Now, um, if I was somebody watching this programme, and perhaps I was married to a French or German citizen, I'd be very, very worried about their status and my children's status in the future. Jeremy Corbyn has said that if I become Prime Minister on day one, I guarantee their status. Why can't you do the same? I believe that as the United Kingdom Prime Minister, it's important that I have a care for UK citizens who are currently living in the 27 countries, uh, remaining countries of the European Union. Mm. That's why I say I think this is about reciprocity. I think it is about us. I want to be able to guarantee EU citizens living here their rights and their status. Um, but I think it's important that we ensure that UK citizens uh, living in Europe have their rights and status guaranteed right. as well. There is goodwill there. Is if you look at my... Sorry, Andrew, if I, I think this is an important point. If you look at my Article 50 letter, uh, which triggered... the letter that triggered Article 50, I was very clear that I believe the rights of EU citizens here and UK citizens in Europe should be an early discussion, should be an early agreement for, point of agreement for us. And if you look at the guidelines, that's exactly what the EU has... the 27 have agreed as well. 
there's goodwill there, I believe we can give that reassurance to people at an early stage. Do you think the richest people in this country, people perhaps in houses worth more than £5 million, are paying their fair share of taxes? Should they be asked to pay more, given that we've got a tough time still ahead of us? If you look at what has happened in terms of tax, the top 1% uh, of people paying uh, tax are actually paying a higher uh, burden a higher share of tax than under us under a Conservative government than they did in any year under a Labour government. But going ahead? I, I think that it is right that we ensure that the tax system is balanced. As I've been clear, uh, it, it would be my intention to reduce taxes on working families. I think you Including can see the I think you can see from the fact, well, let's look and see what we've done as, uh, in relation well, to tax. Let's not go back into history. We haven't got time no. for history, Well, I think our record is important in this well, tax issue. We've taken 4 it. million people okay. out of paying income tax, and 30 million people have seen a tax cut, which, to a basic uh, rate payer, is worth about £1,000 a I've year. I've just been having a conversation with Tim Farron about his attitude to gay sex. You are also a Christian. Do you think that gay sex is a sin? No. And do you think that looking at what happened to Tim Farron, I know he's a rival leader in all of that, that there is an aggressively judgmental mood being imposed on Christians in this country that other groups don't have to face? Yeah. I think that obviously if anybody who is a leader of a political party, who is putting themselves up for election, who is asking right. the public to trust them, is bound to get a whole range of questions from a whole range okay. of, of different groups. Some people think the reason that you called this election is that 30 Conservative candidates and or agents are under investigation by the Crown Prosecution Service, could be facing charges quite soon. Can I ask if that issue was discussed at all when you were dis that, dis that, discussing that, the election? That is not the reason why this election has been called. And let's be clear, in relation to the Electoral Commission issue, local, uh, local spending was properly declared. Uh, we did, the Conservative Party did make an administrative error on its national spending, uh, it, uh, as did other parties. We have paid our if, fine. I would expect other parties to do so. If people are facing CPS uh, action, should they be able to stand? Well, the CPS is an independent body which will make decisions about whether or not it takes actions on individuals. Okay. Uh, what I'm very clear about in this election is that this election is about the national interest. It is right. about the future of our country. And, you and have, that's why I say to people, raised, I want to see so. everybody voting. And you have raised again and again the question of Jeremy Corbyn. Um, can I put it to you that when it came to one of the most important votes that we've had in recent times on the Iraq war, whatever you think of Jeremy Corbyn, he was on the right side looking at history and you were on the wrong side. You went into the voting lobbies behind Tony Blair and voted for the Iraq war, which had so many disastrous consequences. And he did the unpopular thing and stood out against it. On that, at least, he was right and you were wrong. If we look at this choice at this election, the choice people will be making is who do they want to see as Prime Minister? Who do they want to see leading those Brexit negotiations? Who do they want to see defending this country? What Jeremy Corbyn has shown it, it, is that he's not prepared to stand up for the defense of this if country. You, if you knew, His economic if policies you now, simply what, don't add up. If you knew you then what you knew now, would you still vote for the Iraq? Would you still have voted for the Iraq war? Well, that's a hypothetical, uh, Andrew. You can that's only vote at any point in time on do what you, you know. Voting for it? On what you, I voted in the way that I thought was right. Uh, when that vote came into Parliament. Mm. But he was right on that and you were wrong, isn't that the truth? No. I voted in the way that I believed was right mm. uh, when the vote came to, uh, to Parliament. If we look ahead, there will be tough decisions to be taken. I think it's important that we have in Number 10 a Prime Minister willing to defend this country, to stand up for the defence of this country. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn has shown right. he's not willing to do that okay. with economic policies that Thank will take this country forward. Prime Minister, thank you very much indeed. We've covered a lot.